Elijah Eli Bradley was one of Sarah Gail Bradley's children she had to raise alone before she moved to Arizona while Eli remained to finish school staying with his grandparents which one of them being Isaiah Bradley the first black Captain America in the 1940s who now suffered from mental deterioration and was mostly mute due to untreated side effects of a synthetic version of the super soldier serum. So one day after coming from the grocery store, a couple of older street thugs harassed and then shockingly hit Eli's grandfather over the head with a bottle. So Eli decided to take matters into his own hands and confront the bullies with a piece of that same now broken bottle, ready to do damage, only to get his chest caved in, which quickly knocked him to the ground before the goons left. However, Eli wouldn't accept defeat, only to be intercepted by two street dealers who offered Eli an illegal addictive mutant growth hormone drug known as MGH that grants the user temporary superhuman levels of abilities but also causes increased aggression as a side effect which Eli will go on to gladly purchase. So later at their home, he would question his grandmother, Faith, on the validity of his grandfather ever truly being a hero, which she would ensure him he was with a short speech that brought up his confidence in his grandfather once again. So he decided to play a little catch football with him in the backyard when suddenly the older street thugs from before popped up and began to hurt Eli in a malicious attack. However, unexpectedly right then, Grandpa Bradley would interfere and fold them little punks up like a washcloth for messing with his grandson, which Eli decided from here on out he wanted to be just like his grandpa and carry on his legacy. As time progressed, an inventive teenage genius named Nathaniel Richards from the 30th century in a different reality would discover he was destined to become the time-traveling ruler known as Kane the Conqueror by Kane the Conqueror himself, who also gave him a neurokinetic armor which Nathaniel, now horrified by what he's destined to become, traveled to the 20th century and crossed dimensions, now calling himself Iron Lad, to enlist the aid of Kong's greatest adversaries, the Avengers, only to find out they had disbanded so he next decided to break into Stark Industries where he would download the data from a decommissioned Vision's hard drive which helped him locate the next wave of Avengers. Which one being the super soldier who was Elijah's uncle, Josiah Aha Sadiq, the government's refined, genetically engineered child from Isaiah and Faith who haven't been seen or heard from in years. So Elijah will go on to deceive Iron Lad by claiming he was a super soldier as well and could take his uncle's place on a new team, which Iron Lad accepted, since he needed all the help he could get. As he next recruited the shape-shifting Kree Scroll hybrid, Teddy Altman, aka Hawkling, along with Wanda and Vision's warlock son, Billy Kaplan, aka Wiccan, thus forming what the Daily Bugle dubbed the Young Avengers, as Eli was now called Patriot, wearing a superhero gear based on an upgraded version of Bucky Barnes' uniform as they made their way to stop a hostage situation at a church wedding where they would carry out a surprise attack by crashing through the cathedral's rose window while Patriot went on to unleash a couple of white metallic throwing stars hitting one of the criminals as our heroes attempted to bring down the five hostage takers which they ran into a couple of mishaps being that they're rookies in action and still had a lot of training ahead of them thus causing them to quickly lose control of the situation until luckily one of the bridesmaids named Kate Bishop turned the tide and took down the main criminal. Moreover, now that our heroes botched the rescue attempt, they would now have to make a quick escape from the authorities and media circus who initially thought Eli was called Lieutenant America. Following this, they would make their way to a secluded area of the city where Iron Lad would begin arguing with Patriot about his stubbornness to listen and how they were unprepared for the imminent arrival of Kane which Patriot doubted the idea of Kang ever really being a thing before claiming he was going home early so his grandmother wouldn't notice he was gone. But not long after, Hawkland and Wiccan, who was going by Asgardian, witnessed Patriot on the hood of a Hummer, attempting to stop a couple of MGH dealers from escaping before he was shot off the vehicle and then safely caught by Hawkland before he could hit the ground. Nevertheless, Asgardian, followed by Hawkland, would neutralize the vehicle and then the trio would apprehend the violent criminals and after make sure one another was okay since Patriot took a couple of bullets to the chest. Needless to say, Patriot would confiscate the mutant growth hormone drugs and convince his team to leave the criminals tied up for the cops to find later. Furthermore, Cassie Lang was at the abandoned Avengers mansion with Kate, mourning at the death site of her father, Scott Lang, who was killed 
when the return of the believed dead, Jack of Hearts, ended in an untimely self-detonation, taking half the Avengers Mansion along with Scott with him, when suddenly, the girls were met by our heroes, who confronted them for trespassing on private property. Nonetheless, they would identify themselves with legitimate rights of being there, before revealing they wished to join the Young Avengers roster, feeling that they needed more structure. So Cassie next wanted to retrieve her father's Ant-Man suit within the mansion, only to get resistance from Patriot, which she proceeded to judo flip him into the bushes and began to rant angrily while growing to everyone's surprise, including herself, which she didn't know she had powers before she suddenly collapsed to the ground, grabbing the attention of Iron Man, Captain America, Jessica Jones, and Iron Lad, who was unexpectedly inside the mansion before feeling the giant quake. Furthermore, Cassie would eventually awake and revert back to her normal self before Patriot was stopped by Iron Lad from leaving as they next headed inside where Iron Lad would introduce Cap to the team and on how they came to be before he was interrupted by Patriot and Kate arguing with each other about Kate's position as a hero before Cap intervened and requested Kate give them a moment alone so he could continue hearing each young Avenger member's origin story and when it came time for Patriot to explain his he gave Cap attitude feeling Cap's true intentions were to disband the team, while adding his origin story wasn't inspired by him, but his grandfather's, who he felt was the true Captain America, which Cap was already aware of the tragic story, but questioned Eli on how he became a super soldier when his mother was born after her father got the serum. So Eli decided to lie and tell Cap he received a blood transfusion from his grandfather after he lost a lot of blood during a street fight. While next going on to defy Cap, letting him know it's going to take more than words to shut his team down. So Cap, Iron Man, and Jessica agreed to train them only after they see how proficient they were in hand-to-hand -hand combat against each other without their gears. So after they directed them within the training facility beneath the mansion, they tricked them and locked them inside, while next planned on calling each one of their parents. Subsequently, 30 minutes would go by with no word, and Patriot would be the only one to realize they were tricked. So he began the process of trying to find a way out while attempting to lead his team and using the full extent of their powers to get them out of their dire situation when surprisingly kate will come with another save and release our heroes from their holding cell after spying on iron man when he was inputting the security code as she next revealed kane the conqueror was currently fighting the avengers which kane will go on to disclose if nathaniel doesn't return to his proper place in the time stream Reality will cease to exist as we know it, which proved to be so as reality began to crumble right before their very eyes. Meanwhile, Patriot had the team stay put so Kane wouldn't discover their location. In spite of that, Kate was suit up in a costume that she took from Iron Man's storage, which demanded respect as it grabbed everyone's attention, except for Patriot, who let her know she still wasn't coming with the team. That's up until she gave him a shield she also took, which worked as they made their way upstairs, witnessing the Avengers agree to work with Kang to find Nathaniel. So the young Avengers went underground within the sub-basement after feeling betrayed. While Patriot and Kate appeared to be in a power struggle on who's the one leading the team. However, surprisingly, Patriot will make the decision to have Iron Lad guide the team towards another escape route, which inadvertently brought them in the presence of the Avengers and Kang, who was anticipating their arrival. When what one would expect, Kane will go on to size control of Iron Lad's armor, using it as a weapon against everyone present, leaving Iron Lad defenseless and at the mercy of Kang. When suddenly, Cassie, who could not control her size, pushed Kang within the time stream, before planting an intimate kiss on Iron Lad, as our heroes began to recover from their injuries. When Iron Lad decided it would be best to return to his timeline with Kang. However, Patriot felt there had to be another way, and they'll have to make time to figure it out by first following Kate's plan to remove Iron Lad's armor that was a tracking device for Kang. And when suddenly out of nowhere, Kang showed up once again, but this time with an unconscious Cap as a hostage for the exchange of Nate. However, it also daring Patriot would lead his team into battle by also saving Kate's life from a life-threatening attack from Kang, who he had no idea how to defeat and tried to use a part of Iron Lad's armor as a possible solution until Kate suggested otherwise. She would suggest Asgardian use one of his other abilities like magic, which he would eventually do with the help of Hulkling by breaking down Kang's force field, leaving him with only a powerful weapon 
he pulled out his transtemporal armor that can produce any weapon in history out of the time stream, which Kate would go on to disable, leaving Patriot to deliver a final blow, which he would fail to do so, since Kane was also a formidable hand-to-hand -hand combatant. Furthermore, Nate would somehow convert his armor into a reincarnation of Vision to aid them in battle, only for it to be the means for him to reconstruct it back to his 40th century armor. Surprisingly, it would be Nate himself to kill his future self with Kate's sword, thereby unraveling Avengers history and the time stream itself, which would leave Eli no choice but to demand Nate return to the timeline in order to rectify theirs. However, conflict would occur when the new timeline they were currently in had Cassie's father, Ant-Man, never dying. Even so, Eli wasn't trying to hear none of that and had Asgardian cast a spell to have Nate to get the whole ordeal until Nate decided to willingly agree and leave Eli his time-bending armor that had Vision as the AI, who would open up a time portal for Nate to return home. So Nate said his last goodbyes to everyone before disappearing within the time stream. Thereafter, the original timeline would return, with strangely them still being the Young Avengers, which confused them of the complexity dealing with time travel, while Eli reminded Cap that the stunt they pulled before won't be repeated without a fight which wouldn't matter since Cap, Iron Man, and Jessica still shut the team down anyways. So they went on to confiscate their gears and weapons since they didn't have consent from their parents to be superheroes. So our young heroes had no choice but to go home before Kate ensured everyone that their superhero days weren't over yet. Several weeks would go by and Kate, using her father's money, would reform and fund the Young Avengers who would go on to take down Herman Schultz, AKA Shaka and recover over 2 million in stolen cash in the process. Soon after, now at home, Eli would find he ran out of MGH before his grandmother entered his room wondering why he had came home late last night and next told him to check up on his grandfather in the other room before he headed off to school, which Eli did and found his grandfather reading the newspaper with tears of joy, knowing Patriot was secretly his grandson in disguise. Succeeding this, Eli would be spying on some MGH dealers before heading to the rooftop of their warehouse to further observe their operation through the skylight window when he was suddenly caught by a couple of henchmen who began to shoot at him, causing him to fall through the window, landing and destroying the MGH chemicals that were on the lab table. Moreover, he would eventually gain his consciousness only to witness those very same henchmen being killed by their boss, Dr. Calvin Zebo, aka Mr. Hive, but as he went on to interrogate Eli when he was abruptly saved by his team after Asgardian, who was now going by Wiccan, used his magic to cast a locating spell. And then next wondered why Eli was powerless before he ran off angry. So Wiccan went after him only to shockingly find him hiding to inject the MGH drug in his system. However, Eli would try to claim he was using it only as a boost to his powers, which Wiccan would quickly realize that was a lie. Meanwhile, elsewhere at the Bradley home, Cap would pay an unexpected visit to reveal to Eli's grandparents that their 16-year-old grandson was running around as a genetically enhanced superhero vigilante, which Faith would dispute, claiming Eli never received a blood transfusion from his grandfather that would grant him such abilities. Moreover, back at the warehouse, Eli would be souped up on that MGH, taking on Mr. Hyde before injecting him with the overdose of the drug, knocking him to slap out, before Kate was frighteningly concerned about Eli's condition who was pumped up and raging from the drug. When the Avengers would suddenly show up, however, Eli was ready to fight and he meant it this time and wasn't going to back down even at the behest of his team who felt he needed help. Subsequently, Wiccan would cast a spell to knock him unconscious where he would later wake up in the Avengers infirmary with the MGH toxin completely out of his system and next took him to the Avengers meeting room where he would shamefully explain the whole story leading to him taking the MGH drug before he tearfully apologized to everyone for lying to them and then surprisingly quit the team while also relinquishing the mantle of Patriot. Now no longer active, Eli would isolate himself and remain a spectator, watching on TV as Cap held a press conference acknowledging the Young Avengers while publicly and officially disbanding them. Meanwhile, Eli's new adventure was working his school's reference desk as a library assistant. Moreover, his friends would finally run into him after many failed attempts to encourage him to lead their team again after highlighting all the good he did for them. 
However, Eli humbly declined their offer. When out of nowhere, Teddy was snatched up by a super scroll of his race to return him home far into outer space, thus causing the 14-year-old Cassie, who was now calling herself Stature, to spring into action and help her friend. Until he gained the upper hand when he turned into Hulkling, giving our young hero time to make their escape, while Eli took a subway train to head home, since he felt he would only be in their way. Ironically, Eli would be a hostage for the Super Scroll to convince Teddy to comply with his demands, which he would eventually do, and leave with the Super Scroll to take his place as Emperor of the Scroll Empire. Nonetheless, our heroes would suit up and head to the Avengers Tower to request assistance from the Avengers themselves, who unfortunately was currently unavailable, except for Vision who volunteered to help them. However, Patriot felt they still were short members for the task at hand, so Vision directed them to the 16-year-old volatile young speedster, Thomas Shepard, who they would break out and rescue from a testing facility. As they would next find out, he bared a striking resemblance to Wiccan, which would later be revealed he was his long-lost twin. Furthermore, the Kree would involve themselves in the conflict to stake their claim to Hawkling as an officer to their Imperial militia by inheritance and law, which another battle would ensue since Hawkling refused to go with them as well. So after the battle was done, Vision hijacked a Kree warship and Patriot demanded they set course to the Avengers Tower when surprisingly more Kree and Skrull soldiers showed up. So Hawkling, accompanied by his boyfriend Wiccan, tried to seize the engagement which would eventually halt when the Avengers arrived to take a diplomatic approach to the situation. And since Cap couldn't get the two parties to come to a suitable agreement, he decided to declare Hawkling under protective custody of the Avengers as a neutral third party which would quickly provoke the Kree soldiers to fire on him, only for Patriot to save Cap's life by intercepting and taking the laser blast meant for him, which ignited a full-scale Kree scroll war on Earth. So Sentry volunteered to take Patriot off the battlefield and towards Lenox Hill Hospital. Not long after, Cap and the team would head to the hospital, where they would find out Eli lost a lot of blood. And before Cap could offer to be a blood donor, Eli's grandfather was already on a job as Patriot Healing Factor kicked in from his new acquired super soldier powers. Moreover, they would add a new member to their Young Avengers roster, Thomas, who is now going by the superhero name Speed. In conclusion, during the Civil War, Patriot and the Young Avengers would join the side of Captain America to stand against the Superhuman Registration Act. Thereafter, Patriot and company with Kate would aid Bucky Barnes to take on military organism designed only for combat called the Mordok Squad that were built by the criminal organization known as AIM and succeed in this, consult with Bucky privately to discuss the nature of patriotism where much of the way America is governed works against people of his skin color, which they will go on to have a heartfelt discussion while mentioning the first patriot, Jeffrey May, would have approved of Eli taking up the title. Succeeding in this, Eli and his team would be the first to respond during the scroll invasion in Manhattan, while later, Eli and Kate would start dating and officially become a superhero couple. Moreover, Eli would help defend Wakanda Prime against Emperor Killmonger's invasion army, as well as battle alongside the new patriot, Rashawn Lucas, the once teen activist who idolized Sam Wilson. That being said, Elijah Bradley is Marvel Comics' Patriot.